It's the rule of nerds. And today we're ranking the superhero movies of 2017. Here we go. Okay, so we are going to be tackling. Uh, there, there were seven movies that okay. came out in 2017. Uh, let's do a rundown first before we start discussing the movies uh, in depth. Okay. Uh, in February, we saw the Lego Batman movie. Mm -hmm. uh, in March, we saw uh, Logan, one, yes. of, one of our favorite movies of mm -hmm. the year, uh, not just of superhero movies. Uh, a month after that, in April, we saw the release of Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yes. Uh, and then in June, we saw Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. followed by uh, Spider-Man Homecoming in July. Okay. And then uh, in October, we saw Thor Ragnarok. And finally, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, we got Justice League. Okay. So, so let, let's do it. Let, let, let's rank them. That's a total of seven movies. And at number seven... At number seven, we have... Uh, the Lego Batman movie. Okay, so, well, it's the one that's kind of like a superhero movie because yeah. it's more like a spoof. Yes. It's more like a parody of a superhero movie. And uh, I, I really loved the first Lego movie. Yeah. Even Batman in the first Lego movie, I really loved. I guess when... Um, not that I didn't think it was a great movie. It's just that I found it tiring. Yes. It was just like a... A machine gun of jokes and and um, and gags and uh, I just I don't know I just didn't enjoy it as much as I did the first movie or the super uh, the real superhero movies for that matter yeah I, I think I I liked the comedy I liked the humor and if I remember right from the review I think we were saying that uh, there was obviously you know a lot of love uh, put into it, it. Yeah, yeah from the creators and and also like the references that they mm -hmm. make uh the the easter eggs you see in the background you know that they know the they the know batman their batman relation. stuff yeah, yeah. They, they they really know it yeah but at the end of the day you know it was a it was a two hour sketch yeah that's what it yeah. was and uh while while it was good for what it was you know i don't think it was ever going to match up with you know the more ambitious storytelling that uh, the other movies on our list. Took. It's just that you know, even with the Lego, in comparison to the Lego Movie, there was a heart yes. in the center of the story. Yes. Here, it was just like a lot of stringed up gags, you know, one after another. Um, all right. So that said, we come to the six um, real superhero movies, and at number six, uh, it pains us to say, but uh, at number six we have Justice League. Yeah. Uh, it was it was a noble attempt, and it wasn't. It's not bad, bad. Although some people will say that it was bad, bad. Mm. But um, <laughs> uh, it was a it was a a decent superhero movie. It's just that I think we wanted it to really kick butt, but unfortunately, it didn't, and um, it left a lot to be desired, yeah. especially in the company of such, you know good superhero movies for 2017 i don't think it wasn't i don't think it was just that uh in 2017 there were a lot of good uh superhero movies uh, i think that superhero movies in general have evolved yeah and this would this would have been a fine movie i don't know five years ago ten yeah, years ago it would have been awesome but but at this point you know i mean uh marvel has has been uh, making superhero with like the MCU has been around since what 2008 and you can see now that uh, the storytelling they try to do now is uh, has evolved so far beyond what they've been telling in phase one and uh, I think that's what's hurting uh, the, the DCEU uh, right now is because they're on their phase one yes and uh, you know these really feel like uh, they're, they're telling like uh, the early early uh, early superhero movie type narratives and really we're we're so far beyond that now well from what we're getting with marvel that it, it really hurts movies like this one all right and then at number five we have guardians of the galaxy 2 yeah i i think this it's so telling how good this year has been for superhero movies when something like guardians of the galaxy 2 checks in at number five number five you yeah. know uh don't get us wrong again these are just rankings but um actually um you know, it was a. Uh, it's just that Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one, was so complete. Yes. As a movie, and um, 
you know, uh, it was trying to give you the same stuff. But at the same time, it doesn't want to give you too much of the same thing. Yes, yes. Uh, so it's it just wasn't as coherent as the first one. But definitely, the the laughs are still there. Yeah. Uh, notable additions uh, would be you know Mantis. Yes. Who, who yes. was a wonderful, wonderful addition. Another weirdo in this band of loonies. Yeah. Uh, she's the perfect counterpoint to Drax. I, I think we saw a different side to Drax yeah. because of his little. You know, um, they they make a perfect pair. Yeah, and uh, they bounce off of each other beautifully. Yeah, and then of course you have um, ego. Yeah, uh, you know you have Kurt Russell, great actor to play a great role in a great series. Yeah, um, it's just that well, as far as ranking uh, the the top superhero movies, unfortunately it falls only at number five. Yeah, I, I think what I want to say about this is. Uh, it checks all of the boxes yeah. for what makes a successful uh, Marvel movie or even a, a Guardians uh, franchise that mm-hmm. movie. Uh, but again, like we're saying, uh, the the bar has been raised yes. these past few years, where just checking the boxes isn't enough. And, and, uh, and notable for Guardians of the Galaxy Two is the elevation of Yondu from yes. uh, a, a side character. You know, a minor, minor character into somebody who apparently is a major player in the movie. Yeah, and so and, that was definitely a high point. And uh, I think that they gave him a, a really good uh, ending to, to, to his storyline. And it, surprisingly, he supplied the heart. Yeah, of yeah. This very, movie. very emotional ending uh, for 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 a movie that was as funny as it was. Yes, I it shouldn't have had the right to be as emotional as it was to, to pay off like it did in the end. But again, I really loved the Guardians of the Galaxy too. Just so happens that there were four better movies yes. this year. All right, and then at number four, we have actually number three and number four are practically interchangeable. We couldn't make up our minds, but for the sake of making a list, at number four is uh, Spider Man Homecoming and Thor Ragnarok. Okay, so that's number four and number three. Number but like we said, three. we kept you know going back and forth. Yeah. Should Thor be higher than Spider Man or, or Spider Man higher than Thor? Yeah. We loved both movies, but let's talk about Spider Man. I really, really, really love Tom Holland as Spider-Man yeah. slash Peter Parker. So for me, it's the greatest strength of the movie. Mm-hmm. He's perfect for the role. Um, yeah, I just think that you know uh, he also had a very good villain. Yeah. In uh, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton, yeah. Former Batman, now Vulture. So I think it was a very good um, counterpoint and one of the rare movies where. The villain is practically a co-starring. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, you know, like co-lead in the movie. It's not just Peter Parker, Spider-Man. It was also a story about Vulture, and it's not one of those. I'm a bad guy. Period. Yeah. It's one yeah. of those low-key uh, kind of villains where you don't know if you're if you hate them or if you're rooting for them. Yeah. Kind of yeah. villain, which is a very good sign. Which means it's a compelling villain. Yeah, it's the kind of villain who, in their own heads, are the heroes of their own stories. And to a degree, they kind of make sense. Yeah, I, I think one other thing that stands out with Spider-Man: Homecoming, we we've known this for for the past few years. Uh, Marvel has not been content in just um, uh, making a superhero movie. They've been using uh, different genres yes. to tell these superhero stories, and I think. Uh, The, the genre they chose for this one, which was really a uh, coming of age, kind of a little bit uh, 80s referential, uh, John Hughes kind yeah. of uh, uh, t- uh, genre. Uh, I think it was such a, a perfect way to tell a Spider-Man story. Yes. And, uh, and it's the youngest Spider-Man yeah. we've had so far. So I, I just think that uh, every every part about this uh, uh, about this movie, they, they nailed it. They, they nailed the acting, uh, the, the, the directing, the storytelling, everything about it. Was just so perfectly Spider-Man. That's right, and um, I guess suffice it to say, we super loved Spider-Man: Homecoming, and very interchangeable. It's up to you. For yeah. us, it doesn't matter which one is number three, which is number four. Speaking of playing around with genres, at number three is Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok. Uh, it was one of the most unique movies of 2017, not to mention of um, the MCU. Yeah. Because it went completely like 180 degree turn from the first two very serious by the book yeah. comic book superhero 
to something that's very Guardians of the Galaxy in vibe. Yes, yes. I mean, Thor just went from serious to like funny guy, you know, in in a span of like one one sequel. Yeah, and this was uh, this was all about the director Taika Waititi. Uh, I I don't think they've ever like handed the reins to a director completely like they did with Taika here in Thor mm-hmm. Ragnarok. Uh, you know, they they let him do whatever he wanted with the characters no matter how uh, you know how risky how risky how you know uncharacteristic how, how silly he yeah. made some of these characters look uh and you know what it worked everything about it yeah. worked i'm sure a lot of people will still be like oh but that's not thor you know yeah. it's it's weird we prefer you know the 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 earlier two versions but as far as we are concerned it's a refreshing breath of fresh air uh, it's it's something new it worked like very much like in um, Spider-Man: Homecoming, it hinges a lot on their lead actor. Yes. And Chris Hemsworth got away with with what he got away with yeah. in Thor: Ragnarok, that most actors will not be able to pull off. Yeah. You know that comic timing of, you know, throwing just just very deadpan, throwing the lines, very funny, but at the same time, it doesn't come out as a complete joke. Yeah. That yeah. you still believe that it's Thor. Not to mention, definitely one of the best villains in any superhero movie yes. in history, we have Kate Blanchett's Hela. Yeah. That alone elevates it to number three. Okay. So let's move on over to number two. The big two. two. Yep. Yeah, number number one and number two. But let's start with number two. And uh, what we decided on, number two would be Wonder Woman. Yeah. Usually, um, we would have had, we would have, you know, put Wonder Woman at number one, maybe. But it was the movie's third act. Yes. It would have been a perfect movie. If the third act was as strong as the first two, which is the origin part in Themyscira, yeah. the coming of age part where she realizes, you know what? I am Wonder Woman and yes. I'm going to kick, kick butt. It was only the weak third act that where the movie faltered. But had it been a one, two, three punch, yes. we would have had a hard time deciding if this was the best movie of 2017 or the second best. Yeah, I I remember uh, when we were um, discussing after after Spider Man Homecoming came out, we were saying that uh, Spider Man was such an enjoyable movie. Yes, but it was never gonna be, it was never gonna hit the highs that Wonder Woman did because it was not gonna be as culturally relevant. Mm-hmm. As Wonder Woman, I, I think it's even more true now. A couple of months after the Wonder Woman movie came out, yeah, just how uh, culturally important this movie was, uh, and actually, I, I kind of think that the success of Wonder Woman kind of uh, uh, inflated expectations for Justice League a little bit. Exactly, and it, it might eventually had ended up hurting that. Mm-hmm. But you know, again, uh, he cannot rave enough about uh, the job that Patty Jenkins did. With that movie again, very director generated. Yeah, and uh, you know she she got a great performance out of Gal Gadot, a star making uh, turn. Yeah, you know she she was still a relative unknown mm-hmm. uh, uh, coming into that movie, but she is now she might be the biggest star in the DCEU right now. Rightfully so. Uh, great great movie. Uh, everything about it. Great execution. Like you said, uh, the third act, it kind of. Similar to the the third act in Justice League. Yeah, it slipped because. And I kind of think that uh, the DCU movies they kind of get lazy when it comes to the third act. They they think that okay, have a CGI monster there, have our heroes beat them in a big uh, action sequence, and, and with we're a done. big explosion yeah. with lots of lights and lots of smoke. Don't explain anymore how you know that the science behind it. Yeah, that's the main problem we had with the third act. So at number two, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. And so that leaves one movie left. Uh, number one, obviously, is Logan. By a margin, because Logan, I think, was a more consistent movie from beginning to end. It felt so complete. Even if you've never seen an X-Men movie before, or if you'll never see another X-Men movie after, that whole movie was just the whole package. And it was consistent from beginning to end. And just like Thor Ragnarok and Wonder Woman, a lot of it hinged on a great, great star. Yes. And, you know, it's it's just great that Hugh Jackman capped off his career, his tenure as Wolverine slash Logan with the best performance of his career. Yes. I, I think just 
this was hands down plain and simple a great movie yeah uh, not even a great yeah. superhero movie but a great movie period I, i i remember when logan first came out uh, i think people were were uh, buzzing about it being hey maybe you know it's it's early it's really early but maybe this could be uh, uh an oscar contender sometime yeah. in the future so uh we're gonna see uh we're, We haven't quite. Uh, we we don't quite know what's gonna we're happen. Almost yet. there, but not. We're, not we're not quite. not yet at Oscar season, and uh, you know it, it's it's uh, to to a movie's disadvantage to come out that early, that mm-hmm. far away mm-hmm. from Oscar season. But that's how good the movie was. If it was what? Sorry, March, not February. March when it came out, and already it was getting Oscar buzz. So. Uh, you know, again, there it had some, uh, you know, so, some weight to it, some gravitas to it, knowing that it would have been Hugh Jackman's last performance, maybe uh, Patrick Stewart's last performance. And again, uh, we cannot stress enough. We have to call attention to the incredible uh, performance of Patrick Stewart. Yes. Not just you know um, Hugh Jackman as Logan, but also Patrick Stewart. The heartbreaking performance of Patrick mm. Stewart as Uh, Charles Xavier and again it had this was a movie that had to pay off uh, what was it like 17 years of uh, of these amazing characters yeah and they just stuck at the landing mm-hmm. uh, so again hats off to Logan uh, hats off to Fox you know we, we we've been saying that the the X-Men franchise uh, you know a lot of continuity problems you know it, it, and they don't seem to know where logan is coming off from because yeah. remember these are the same people who um were coming off of the original trilogy yeah and then of course it came out during the time of the of the new trilogy so yeah. where where you 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 also see you know a couple of performances from them so yeah. you're not really quite sure which universe they're coming yes, yes. or maybe it's the perfect bridge yeah. between the two trilogies yeah. but you know like After everything has been said and done, it's an incredible movie. Yeah, it it was it had to be considered a, a risky move for Fox to have done this. You know, knowing that they had, you know, like like, like with Marvel, they have this this universe. There's this uh this narrative they're trying to tell, and for them to step away from that to just tell a great story. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it paid off big time with this one. Again, great movie, well deserving of the number one spot. For our ranking tonight. So, what about you? What do you think? Uh, tell us in the comment section. I'm pretty sure you have a tweak or two as to your uh, ranking of the seven superhero movies for 2017. All right. So, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's the Rule of Nerds, and check out our social media accounts. It's the Rule of Nerds. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And for our individual accounts, you can check out my social media. It's at Chico Garcia on Instagram and Twitter. And also it's at Chico Garcia RX931 on Facebook. And you can follow me at uh, M underscore Bolante on Twitter. It's JM underscore Bolante on Instagram. Nerds, Nerds out! Here we go!